Good evening and welcome to the news roundup for Thursday, the 13th of July. Before we get into the news, please remember to like this video, share your views in the comments, and share the video with your family and friends. Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! Now for the news in detail. The Police Joint Anti-Gang Task Force seized three rifles, four pistols, and an estimated 200 rounds of assorted ammunition in an operation at a two-story dwelling in Green Heights Mews, Green Pond, St. James on Thursday morning. Three suspected key members of the notorious Only the Family or OTF gang were detained by cops. During the operation, a Toyota Crown motor car was also removed from the premises. More details will be provided in subsequent newscasts. Javan Garwood was freed in the Trelawney Home Circuit Court this morning, where he was being tried for the murder of his stepmother, Andrea Low Garwood. He was charged with murder and a conspiracy to murder. The prosecution told the court that two years and seven months of trying to get Dwight Bingham, who pleaded guilty to the murder to talk, had failed. The Crown also said that digital evidence was scrambled and it had no way of proving that Javan was guilty. Chief Justice Brian Sykes, instructed the foreman of the jury to return a not guilty verdict. Low Garwood was shot and killed on the 31st of January 2021 while worshipping at the Agape Christian Fellowship Church in Trelawney, allegedly by a man who sat behind her. The gunman subsequently escaped in a waiting motor car. Bingham pleaded guilty on the 3rd of July to the charges of murder and illegal possession of a firearm. He is to be sentenced on the 25th of July. Leon Hines, the getaway driver, pleaded guilty to illegal possession of a firearm and being an accessory after the fact, and was sentenced to six years in prison on the 25th of March, 2021. A construction worker was killed and another man injured after gunmen invaded a bar in Crooked River and Otterbay, St. Mary, on Tuesday. The deceased is 31-year-old Sanjay Stewart, who is also known as Village of Crooked River in the parish. A soldier and a bartender managed to escape unharmed. Reports are that shortly after 4 p.m. on Tuesday, Stewart, the soldier and another man were patrons at the bar when armed men entered and opened gunfire, hitting Stewart multiple times. Another man was shot in the arm. The gunmen then fled the area in a waiting motor car. The wounded men were assisted to the hospital where Stewart was pronounced dead, while the other man was treated and released. Stewart's killing came after Saturday's shooting death of 32-year-old Odeen Abdullah, otherwise known as Chin, also of Crooked River. Abdullah was a concrete block maker. In that incident, the police reported that about 8.40 p.m., Abdullah was shot several times by unknown assailants as he walked home. The police have not established whether there is any connection outside of the location between both killings. Still in Anata Bay, the police are trying to find the attackers of a man who was chopped to death on PNP Lane in the town on Wednesday night. The deceased has been identified as Patrick Samuels, otherwise called the Bongo Ricky. He was found with several chop wounds at his home and later pronounced dead at hospital. It is reported that around 9.30 p.m., residents heard the now deceased crying out for help from his house. The residents summoned the police who went to the community, entered Samuels' home and found him with several chop wounds to the head, both hands, chest and back. He was taken to the Anatoby Hospital where he was pronounced dead shortly before midnight. No motive has been established for the attack, the police said. Over the last few decades, Grand Spen has experienced many gun wars and according to some residents, the community is under threat of returning to those days. Residents say they hope that the Jamaica Constabulary Force will not allow those conditions to return to the community. The area became tense after 45-year-old businessman Omar Romerite was killed on the 7th of June. Things, however, got worse on July 7th, following an early morning gun attack on dancehall entertainer Jashi and members of his entourage as they drove out from a party venue on Constant Spring Road. Six members of the group, who had earlier celebrated Jashi's 22nd birthday, were shot and injured by unknown assailants. Jashi, who was in the pickup truck that was shot up, escaped unharmed. Most of the members of the entourage were said to be residents of Grand Spen. 
Since the shooting on Josh's birthday, residents in the community have grown concerned about the tension that has developed. One elderly man claimed that since the shooting outside the club, there has been all guns out because people don't know whom to trust. The bad vibes is building up again. We are upset. Every gunner has a night time. Everybody are consider what is going on. We're just keeping our eyes open, the man said. Another resident claimed that the entire community is tense and has been regularly visited by the police since the incident outside the club. One woman lamented that Josh's relatives have not been able to enjoy peace of mind in the comfort of their homes due to what has been happening. Six men were arrested after two homemade guns, a notebook and 14 cell phones containing information of overseas residents were seized during an operation in Orrit Lane, Buff Bay, Portland on Wednesday. Reports from the Port Mario police said that at about 1.30 p.m., lawmen carried out an operation in the area when a premises was searched and the two firearms found. A further search of the property revealed one notebook and one Samsung cellular phone containing the identity and the contact information of persons living overseas. Thirteen additional cellular phones were found in a bag inside the dwelling. Another premises in the area was searched and the six men were taken into custody. Their identities are being withheld pending further investigations. A study has found that 8.3% of Jamaica's population experienced undernourishment for the period 2020 to 2022. The findings was contained in the State of Food, Security and Nutrition in the World 2023 report, which was released on Wednesday. The report further outlined that during that same period, 25% of the population faced severe food insecurity, while 54% experienced moderate food insecurity. At the same time, the report has revealed that 15% of the Caribbean's population experienced undernourishment for the period 2020 to 2022. Jamaica Labour Party Councilor for the Montego Bay West Division, David Brown, has been charged with malicious destruction of property. He appeared in court on Wednesday morning. Councillor Brown was charged after he allegedly kicked in the glass of a vehicle belonging to the daughter of a Minister of Government. The woman told the police that the councillor hit her. He is also facing assault charges. Councillor Brown is to return to court on the 4th of September. The alligator pond the police in Manchester have arrested a woman found in possession of an illegal firearm and several rounds of ammunition. According to reports, about 7.30 a.m. on Wednesday, a police team was in an area known as Compound when they saw the woman carrying a bag and acting strangely. She was accosted and searched, and a .38 revolver along with 17 rounds of ammunition was found in the bag. She was taken into custody and is expected to be charged following questioning. This is the second firearm seize in the Alligator Pond policing area since the start of the month. On the 4th of July, a 21-year-old man was arrested after an illegal firearm was seized at Top Bay in the area. In business, Jamaica's Industry and Commerce Minister Arbin Hill is urging a review of how earnings from export is calculated locally. Hill said the country is already exporting services in a number of areas, including tourism and business process outsourcing. I want to see the earnings from tourism and the global digital services calculated in our exports. Right now, they are not. The export figures are terrible. We will talk about that another time, possibly. But today, I want to make sure we understand that everybody who works in the tourism business, in the BPO business, is a natural exporter and that is vital to this country, he asserted. Hill said he will follow up with the Ministry of Finance regarding the calculations. The Statistical Institute of Jamaica Statin says as at January this year, Jamaica earned US $325 million from exports. In sports, Jamaica's hopes of a first ever Gold Cup title ended in disappointment last night after they crashed to a 3-0 defeat to Mexico in Las Vegas. Henry Martin gave Mexico the lead with less than two minutes played in the game. Luis Chavez doubled the advantage on the half-hour mark with a stunning free kick, while Roberto Alvarado added a third in injury time. Mexico will now play Panama in the final on Sunday. In the weather forecast, the Meteorological Service of Jamaica is advising that a tropical wave was expected to move across the island later today into Friday. 
Cloudy conditions were expected this afternoon with isolated showers across hilly areas and western parishes. Tonight is projected to have lingering showers mainly across eastern parishes, with elsewhere being partly cloudy and hazy. Meanwhile, a low-level jet stream is expected to remain across the Central Caribbean region, including Jamaica, for the next few days. And on the entertainment scene, after 52 years with the Fabulous Five, Grub Cooper is leaving the band for which he has been drummer, vocalist and artistic director since inception. Cooper said he has long wanted to pursue solo projects, but assignments with Fab Five prevented him from doing so. He stressed, however, that there is no animosity with his bandmates. His immediate plans include a song saluting Roots Reggae Group, The Mighty Diamonds, as well as working in theatre and with younger artists. The Linstead born Cooper was a founding member of the band, which was formed in Kingston in 1971. Meanwhile, dancehall artist TJ, who performed at the send off reception for Jamaica's Sunshine Girls on Tuesday, ahead of their departure for South Africa, has pledged to donate $500,000 to the national team. During his performance, hosted by the Minister of Sports, Olivia Grange, at the Nutsford Court Hotel under the theme, The Goal is the Gold, the Sunshine Girls joined the artist, putting on a show by doing the popular drift dance. The DJ pledged a donation through his Timoy Jones Foundation at the end of the performance. And that is it for your news roundup for today. We would appreciate you liking this video, leaving a comment and sharing the video with your family and friends. Have a good evening and see you next time.